This video is about radioactivity and today we'll be specifically focusing on activity and the quantity decay constant. So let's start off with some definitions then. Um, the word activity is actually to do with a sample of uh, nuclei. So we've got a large amount of nuclei and the activity is the rate at which the sample are decaying. The rate is effectively how many are decaying per second. So the, the standard unit is seconds minus one or per second, but activity has its own unit. The unit is the Becquerel, named after Henri Becquerel, which is B-E-C-Q-U-E-R-E-L, uh, shortened to capital B, little q. So that's the unit there for activity, and one Becquerel is equal to one per second. Okay, so that's activity. Another uh, new uh, quantity for you is the decay constant. The decay constant is given the symbol lambda. Now the decay constant is the probability that one single nucleus within our sample of radioactive material will decay per unit time. Now that again is measured in um, per seconds but it doesn't have its own unit so we just leave it as per seconds. So we've got activity measured in becquerels which is the number which actually decay per second, the rate, and the decay constant which is the probability that one of them in our sample will decay per unit time. And it's important just to emphasize that it is a probability because obviously randomness um, is a part and parcel of radioactivity. Uh, and what random actually means is that you cannot tell when a single nucleus will decay or which nucleus will decay um, in that particular time. So that's what random means. Uh, radioactivity is also spontaneous. Now random and spontaneous have different meanings. Spontaneous means that it happens all by itself and it doesn't need any external influence or it doesn't need any uh, anything from the outside. It's an inherent process within that s isolated system, i.e. the nucleus itself. Um, so spontaneous means it will just happen anyway without anybody forcing it or inducing it. So for any given isotope, so let's take maybe carbon-14 as an example, there is a fixed probability for that particular isotope of carbon that a single nucleus will decay in, you know, per second or in any unit time. A fixed probability. Now that depends on the nucleus itself. So obviously uh, uranium-238, um, for example, um, as an alpha emitter, that has a different probability that one of the uranium nuclei will decay to the carbon-14. right? But for each individual isotope, the probability, i.e. the decay constant, which we're going to look at in a minute, um, is fixed. And an analogy is um, a dice. And here's a little dice up here. Um, you've got, effectively, a one-sixth chance of rolling a six, because there are six sides. Every time you roll the dice, you have the same probability that the dice will come up with the six on top. So this is effectively the decay constant for a dice, one-sixth. Obviously, nuclei are much more complex than dice, uh, and therefore the, the decay constant, the probabilities, are going to be wildly different, and usually very, very small. Um, now, obviously, it's per second as well, rather than this one being per roll. There's a prob one-sixth probability that the six will turn up every roll, whereas with an isotope, it's per second, per year. Whatever, so that's the, that's the differences, and that's that's kind of the analogous situations between nuclei and a single dice. Okay, so if you have um, a probability that one nucleus will decay, um, and then you scale that up to a large number of nuclei, and here in this little diagram here, each of the little black dots represent a single nucleus, so you have lots and lots of nuclei. Um, with each one having a fixed probability of decaying, you can see that there will be a certain proportion which will decay per second. Let's say the area that I'm shading in now, for example, that will be the proportion of the nuclei that will decay, and that will be a fraction of the total nuclei that remain for any given unit of time. Okay, so how quickly the nuclei are decaying? Um, i.e. how many of these of the total, which proportion of the total will decay in one second. It depends on the probability that each one of them will decay, i.e. the decay constant. That's the probability that one of them will decay. And it also depends on how many you've got, i.e. the number of undecayed nuclei. So if you want to count how many are in this shaded square, 
Um, the number that you get depends on how many you've got in total because obviously we've got a fixed proportion of them which are going to decay. So the number that decay per second, i.e. the number in this box here, uh, is what we call the activity of that sample, capital A. Alright, so those are how the three things fit together. Um, and the, using the dice analogy again, um, obviously here if you rolled lots and lots of dice, let's say each one of these little black dots was a dice, uh, and you rolled them all together, you would see that one sixth of them came up with the six on top. And how many that actually relates to depends on how many dice you've got. And so if you had uh, double the number of dice, you would have double the activity. So the activity and the number that you have are directly proportional to each other. Um, and again, the probability uh, relates to the decay constant. Okay, so let's put that all together. Um, and what we have is this equation here, which is called the activity equation. And it relates all those three factors together. And it says that the activity, remember which is measured in Becquerel's, is equal to the decay constant, which is measured in per second, multiplied by the number of nuclei that you have. Now obviously this is just a number, so it's, um, it's actually unitless, which is why Becquerel's and per second are the same, because the number is just a number, it's the number of nuclei, and has no unit. Okay, so the activity is equal to the probability that one of them will decay, multiplied by the number that you have, and that will give you the number actually decaying per second. Okay, so let's have a, a little go at using that. Now here's a, a sample question for you. What will be the activity of one kilogram of undecayed iodine-131, which has a decay constant of 9.9967 times 10 to the minus 7 per second? You tend to find these very, very small numbers for, um, for decay constants. This one's about in the middle of the range, I would say. Now, I put this question in because it's more, um, more like an exam question than just basically using this equation. So you have to actually do quite a lot to this before you can actually plug it into this equation. Because you need to find n. Now, one kilogram is not the same as the number of nuclei that you have. So you need to use the molar uh, mass of iodine-131 and then work out how many moles you've got. And then you have to use Avogadro's number to work out how many nuclei you actually have. Well, I've done that all for you, um, and when you do that, you, start, you find out that n is approximately 4.6 times 10 to the 24. So, one kilogram of your iodine-131 will have 4.6 times 20, 10 to the 24 atoms in it, and therefore the same number of nuclei. Um, so, to get the activity, we multiply that number by the decay constant. So, we have 9.9967 times 10 the minus 7, which is the decay constant lambda, and we'll multiply that by n, so times 4.6 times 10 to 24. Uh, and when you calculate all that, you end up with uh, an activity of approximately 4.60 times 10 to the 18 becquerels. Okay? And that's the answer. So that's how you do that. It's literally multiplying this number by this number. But just bear in mind that actually you may have some work to do to get to the number of nuclei that you have to begin with. Okay, there's one other way to view the activity, um, and that is to view it as the rate of change of the number remaining. Um, and this is quite an interesting relationship. So let's go back a couple of slides actually um, to here. Now, obviously, after our first throw of the dice, if you like, after our first second or day or whatever it is, which is our unit of time, this number in the red box here will not be undecayed anymore. They will have gone from the equation. They will be no longer useful to us because they will have decayed. Uh, and so we will have fewer remaining. remaining. So we'll have the remainder of this yellow square. The probability remains the same that each nucleus will decay, but we have fewer remaining. And therefore, as the number of nuclei that we have goes down, that leads us to the conclusion that the activity is also going to reduce as well uh, as we have fewer remaining. Because looking back at the equation again, if this number goes down and this number stays the same, then this number is also going to go down. So the activity will reduce by time, and that depends on the number remaining. And so effectively, 
we can write this, that the activity is the rate of change of the number remaining. Um, and we write it down here in the form delta n over delta t. And that's a really easy to use equation. Uh, so here we have another example question. Assuming the rate of decay stays constant over a two second interval, how many nuclei will decay in this time if the activity is 2.96 times 10 to the 3 becquerels? So what we have to do here is rearrange this equation if we want how many nuclei will actually decay in this time. Uh, we rearrange it to delta n, which is effectively the change in the number of nuclei. How many nuclei will decay will be equal to a, that's an a, that's a delta, a delta t. Um, and so the problem with, these, with using this, this equation here is it should be a differential. Um, but the problem is that A-level physics, we don't actually use any calculus. So we have to assume that the rate of decay stays constant over a two-second period, which obviously it might not. But we're assuming that. So all we do is we multiply the activity, which is 2.96 times 10 to the 3, by the time interval, which is 2 seconds. Um, check your units, make sure that's in becquerels, which is per second. So per second times seconds gives the unit list, which is n. And we end up with 5.92 times 10 to the 3 nuclei actually decaying. And that's it. Thank you very much.